After recently focusing on the 1982 classic known as The Dark Crystal, it felt only appropriate to examine the other Jim Henson-driven puppet fantasy of the 80s. This is Labyrinth. In this 1986 film, after her brother is taken from her due to a regretted request, Sarah must traverse a perilous labyrinth to retrieve him from the Goblin King. This extremely simple plot results in a sea of imaginative surrealism, world building, intelligent fairy tale trope deconstructions, excitement and playfulness. The visuals are extremely appealing with immaculately designed costumes and colourful, intricately crafted, expressively animated puppets and a sense of architectural splendour. One other notable area in which the film triumphs is humour. While not explicitly a comedy, several inventive or astute humorous observations are made extremely successfully. Unsurprising given the scriptwriter was Terry Jones of Monty Python fame. The performances are typically competent. The voice actors are all well cast as they were in Dark Crystal with a similar sense of infectious theatricality. Special mention in this department goes to David Shaughnessy, who voices Sir Didymus. While Jennifer Conley's performance of Sarah improves as the character proves herself refreshingly capable cunning and undergoes some natural character development, any discussion on Labyrinth would be incomplete without reference to the late David Bowie's performance as Jareth. He's the lead male role in this film, making him Star Man. <laughs> as the surprisingly complex Goblin King, who technically serves as a villain while undertaking a task that was requested of him, he shows a delightfully wild sense of showmanship and a generally commanding presence. The film of course has a second villain, with an equally commanding presence. The costume department, who left a certain feature of Bowie mostly exposed. The snake he throws at Sarah in an early scene is not the only snake that's thrust into the audience's visual line. The piece of the film is mostly commendable, as soon as Sarah's brother is taken the film momentum builds, and thanks to occasional moments of suspense, complication, and introductions of diverse characters who develop a rewarding sense of camaraderie and even undergo their own secondary character arcs at times. I've briefly mentioned the film's sense of imagination, and it deserves more explicit emphasis. Ideas such as riddles, visual spatial illusions, wordplay, and versatile species are all used to extremely pleasing effect. One particularly enjoyable scene involves a room of staircases inspired by the works of M.C. Escher, where David Bowie is capable of remaining on the ground even when he's upside down. He seems to have a lot of ground control. <laughs> Labyrinth dramatically captures a sense of childlike whimsy with a degree of care that also allows adult audiences to revel revel in its quality. While an undeniably enjoyable experience, there are lesser points to be made about Labyrinth. Despite being a musical, the songs often seem to disrupt the flow of the film rather than than enhancing it. And even though most of the numbers are basically entertaining, they definitely sometimes feel misplaced in the setting of the film. The song performed by the Fireys, for example, is mostly irritating. As the World Falls is particularly well performed and tuneful, but the film would function as adequately in its absence. There are also moments where the extremely basic plot does cause the film to become slightly meandering. Though this is definitely a rarity, and usually, all the features listed under the positives expertly conceal this issue, so I don't wish to suggest that the film is a saddening bore, for she's lived it ten times or more. Since the film's pacing, as mentioned earlier, is mostly commendable. In my previous video, I revealed that Dark Crystal is among my all-time top ten films, and as a result, I undoubtedly view that as the superior of these two oft-compared Jim Henson works. In The Dark Crystal, at least for me, the world building feels more complete, the premise more investing, and the visuals more compelling. However, while there are similarities, since the film's stories and worlds are totally separate, a direct comparison isn't necessary, and viewed on individual merit, Labyrinth is an imaginative, visually pleasing, and invigorating piece of 1980 cinema that is worthy of an out of 10. And so you've managed to find your way out of the labyrinth. If you have any suggestions for future videos, go to the centre of the labyrinth and leave them th No, I'm going to abandon that labyrinth analogy. Leave a comment below on what videos you'd be interested in seeing. Thanks for watching, and if I don't see you next time, I'll assume you're lost in the labyrinth. I saw my baby crying hard as babes could cry. What could I do? My baby's love had gone and left my baby blue. Nobody knew what kind of magic spell to use.